Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Trees and Foliage Brush Pack for Particle Shop. So let's go ahead and get started. I've gone ahead and opened a digital painting that I created, and I'm going to enhance that using the Brush Pack. You'll notice in the Layers palette, I have some layers that I created ahead of time. I'm going to be demonstrating with these. I'm going to go ahead and show this layer here called Broad Bush. And you can see down in the bottom right, there's this nice bush. Let's see how I created that bush. Now, because I have a lot of different layers here, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to merge all those layers into a single layer so that I can work on it in Particle Shop. The quickest and easiest way to do that is to go to the window menu and look under extensions for the Particle Shop extension. And that'll give you a command you can use to automate that process. But essentially what you're doing is you're selecting all of your layers here, and then you're hitting Control J to jump them all to a new layer above everything else. And then you're hitting Control E to merge those jumped layers into a single layer. So essentially what I get are all of my layers combined into a single layer. Now I can go to Filter, Painter, Particle Shop. And it looks a little funky because it's showing some stuff that's bleeding off of the edge of the canvas, but we won't worry too much about that. Let's go to the Trees and Foliage Brush Pack and let's select Broad Bush. And I'll show you how I made this bush. So I want to start with kind of a dark green color like this. I want to make sure it's a little bit desaturated too. And I'll do a little squiggly mark up here in the sky. That'll be the shadow side. We know that the highlight will be on the top right because that's where the light source is in this painting. So I'm going to brighten my color a bit by going up and to the right in the color picker, and I'm going to shift the hue a bit more toward yellow. Do a little squiggly mark over on this side. Go a little bit brighter, a little bit more yellow, another squiggly mark, a little bit brighter, a little squiggly mark, and you can see I start to get this nice three-dimensional looking bush. Now if you need to, you can select your dropper tool and you can sample these darker colors, and you can bring those back in over the top. And that's a pretty good looking bush. Now all we need to do is go to save, save only the brush strokes. Now we have that bush and we can move it wherever we like and position it in our painting. You could even hold alt and then drag it. And you could have multiple bushes. If you wanted to really quickly just fill this in like this. You could even transform the bushes with control T if you wanted to make some of them thinner or change the angle of them so they don't all look the same. We'll go ahead and just delete those bushes. And I'll just repeat that process so that we can take a look at what some of the other brushes can do. The next brush that we'll look at is called Bush. And Bush is pretty easy. You just start painting from the top here and work your way down and you get this nice bush. It's important that you go from the top down so that the leaves overlap in a natural way. Unless of course the perspective is different. For example, I can go like this and paint in this direction, and then it looks like there's a bush kind of going off into the distance there. I can use lighter pressure to get a thinner mark or heavier pressure to get a thicker mark. And I could, of course, build up a nice hedge sculpture or something if I wanted to. And then just like with the broad bush that I created earlier, I could save it, save the brush strokes, and move it wherever I want in my composition. But let's just go ahead and continue on looking at more of these brushes. Next is Evergreen. I'll do a little dab here with Evergreen, and you can see it's kind of a ring-shaped brush. So that means that when you paint with it, it ends up creating some little gaps between the leaves. I'm going to use a bigger brush here, and you'd use Evergreen kind of like this. And then, of course, you can add more colors to this. If I wanted to add a shadow on the far side, or maybe add a little bit of highlight color, I could do that. I can build up a pretty nice-looking tree that way. Let's move on to the next brush, which is Fine Grass. I'm going to go ahead and use the Dropper tool to sample this grass color here. Switch back to my brush and I'll paint in some fine grass. It's kind of covering my subject. And just paint that in and add a little bit of subtle grass texture to the background. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this too. You might be able to see that a bit better. This is a great brush for painting grass. You can make it a bit brighter too so it stands out more. If you want shorter grass, you can use a smaller brush. If you want taller grass, you can use a bigger brush. Now I'm holding Control and Alt and dragging my pen to resize my brush, and the cursor does not accurately represent how big the brush is going to be. For example, I'm making a huge brush here, but the stroke that I'm getting is only that wide. So that's one of the tricky things about working with this particular brush. For the most part, you want it to be set pretty large, and you can control the scale of the brush up here in the slider, and just make sure it's toward the higher end here. Moving on to the next brush, we have Hedge. Hedge is another circular kind of brush, so you can use this to build up a nice hedge like this. You can make your brush smaller if you want smaller leaves, or much bigger if you want bigger leaves. Moving on, we have leaf clumps. 
We could put a few leaf clumps here on this bare tree. We'll just draw in some little squiggles here to put in some leaves. Maybe we'll have some darker leaves over here on the shadow side. We could have some highlight leaves that are a bit brighter. Just pepper in a few of those. That's a good way to put some leaves on a tree. If you wanted the clumps to be smaller, you could use a smaller brush. Or if you want them to spread out more, you can use a bigger brush. The next brush is going to look really out of place in this image, and that is palm leaf. Let's do a palm leaf here in the sky. The trick for this brush is to go up kind of slowly and straight and then quickly curve over like that and make an arch. It's going to take a little bit of practice, but once you get it down, it'll be really easy to make palm leaves. I'll make my color maybe a bit darker too so we can see it. But this is a great brush for making palm leaves. The next brush is shrub. Shrub makes really great looking shrubs. Gives you really nice random results. You just squiggle around and make little swirlies with this. You get all kinds of nice leafy patterns. You can make your brush really big. You'll get bigger, broader leafy patterns. Or you can keep it smaller to get tighter leaf clumps. The next brush is tall grass. We'll do a test stroke here. And you can see we get this really nice thick grass. If we use lighter pressure, then we get smaller grass. And if we use heavier pressure, then it starts to get taller and thicker. So we can kind of build up the perspective. Another thing you could do to enhance the perspective, start out with kind of a lighter color and then make that color get darker as you move into the foreground. And that'll give you kind of a sense of perspective that way. The next brush is thick leaf. We could add some thick leaves on the tree here. This is just a different type of leaf. It's a bit thicker. We could use this on the bare limbs to add some leaves to it. Make your brush bigger for bigger leaves or smaller for smaller leaves. Now where there's foliage, there's often tree trunks. So of course we have a tree trunk brush. We'll select that. If you use a smaller brush, you get a thinner tree trunk that's more distant. If you use a bigger brush, then you get a thicker tree trunk. So we could have a tree coming off from the side here. I'll just taper it off with light pressure there. You can also just build up the tree trunk like this by painting over it multiple times. If you want it to be nice and thick like that, or you could have it be kind of old and scraggly like that. You could also have some little stumps kind of coming off of it like that. And then if you want to add branches, We'll go to the branches brush and we'll draw some branches coming off of here. Again, just tapering off the stroke. We can make a nice old dead looking tree very easily with this. I'm gonna go back to tree trunks, make my color a bit darker and we can add a little bit of shadow side on the tree as well. So it looks more realistic. We can do that on the branches as well with a dark color. That way they have some three dimensionality. We can select a lighter color here Put in a bit of a highlight here on that side as well. Moving on down, we have treetop. We'll make kind of a medium sized brush here. And treetop makes these nice round treetops. The brush kind of swirls around, so it fills it in very nicely for you there. You use a smaller brush, then you get smaller treetops. If you use a bigger brush, then of course you get bigger treetops with bigger leaves. You probably want something kind of in the middle. And then of course you could add tree trunks to these and branches if you wanted to. The next brush is vines and we can put some vines on our tree here. If we do a test stroke, you can see that this brush moves around a little bit on its own and wraps around itself. So I'm just using light pressure to draw some thin vines here on the branches. We could have some kind of squiggle off like that. Maybe it wraps around here and goes around the trunk a few times like that. And then last but not least, we have wild grass. Let's choose kind of an old dead grass color like this. Make a pretty big brush and we'll paint with wild grass. We want to start with the background and move toward the foreground. I'm going to make my brush bigger so that my grass is bigger. And just kind of layer it up like this. Make my brush bigger again. Now I can have that little hill like that. We're going to go ahead and save the brush strokes for that. And there you can see I have my nice hill. Now it is covering up the tree trunk, so I'll need to take that layer and I'll need to move it down beneath the tree trunk. And if I wanted to, I could also adjust the color. If I'm not happy with the color, I can go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. I could change the hue if I want it to better match that other grass color. Maybe make it a little bit darker so it stands out. And that's a really nice way to make some grass. Now I'll just jump ahead a bit to the finished version of my example painting here. I've added all this stuff in using the same techniques I showed you earlier. I have the evergreens off here in the distance. 
I have the tree trunk and the branches with the vines. I have the wild grass. I have some of the various bushes and I have the leaf clumps. So you can see this is a very versatile brush pack and it is really awesome for landscape painting. If you enjoyed this tutorial, take a quick second to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more particle shop tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.